What up dude bros, I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Nerf Zombie Strike Survival System Scravenger. The Scravenger is a spring-powered, magazine-fed, lever action blaster in the Zombie Strike series. It's comparable to the old Zombie Strike Sling Fire. I believe the Scravenger is kind of an upgraded version of the Sling Fire. The Scravenger will retail for $49.99 or about $50 US dollars and is released in fall of 2018. Hasbro sent me this early sample to get the review out as quickly as possible, so let's get into it. Included is the blaster, detachable stock, two 12 round magazines, the bonus blaster stored in the stock, tech to cool light, optic, detachable barrel, darts, and the instructions. So I'll begin with an external overview of the blaster, but it's a little complicated now. So this is the Scravenger blaster without anything attached to it. Up front we have an in-strike barrel attachment lug so you can put on whatever barrel extension you'd like. Under that in the front we have an in-strike tactical rail and another tactical rail up here. And this top one is built into something of a carry handle which is different than the sling fire. Below the carry handle we have an access door to get to that and prime the blaster. Then you can just pull back and get your finger in there to clear out a jam or a malfunction. Below that is the magazine well. This is compatible with in-strike mags of course. The Scravenger includes two 12 round stick mags that look like this. They have this cool deco on the, the shell here. After you load it like any other magazine you can just slide it on in there. And to remove the magazine, you can press the magazine release, which is on this side and mirrored on this side for right or left-handed shooters. Full ambi, bro. Gotta get the tactics. The location of the magazine release is a little weird if you're used to more traditional rifle platforms, because if you're holding the blaster with your right hand, you can't reach it with that right finger. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's not too big a deal to prime down the blaster. Then it puts your right index finger right next to that mag release to grab the mag out. On the left side of the shell, it also has a reset button right here. After you prime the blaster, you're not able to reprime it. So if you're not able to pull the trigger and you have some type of jam or something, you're able to push that, prime the blaster again, take out the mag, clear the jam, and then continue on. Now getting to a super cool feature, the selector switch, sort of. It's in single fire, or I consider it normal mode right now. So when you want to fire, you prime the blaster, you press the trigger, you prime the blaster, you press the trigger, and continue. But if you want to go a little faster, you're able to enable slam fire by pressing this little switch to the right. And slam fire with the lever action system means the trigger is effectively pressed right when the lever returns to the back position. With a normal blaster, you're able to hold the trigger down and prime at the same time to enable slam fire. With this blaster, because it's lever action, you'd have to prime with one hand, hold down the trigger with your other hand because you can't really do that one-handed. So the slam fire switch allows you to have slam fire with a lever action blaster, which is pretty cool. And flipping between slam fire and single fire is as easy as moving the switch back and forth. Moving back to the priming system, it's a lever action spring power blaster. So to prime, you pull down and push back. That prepares you to fire once. Lever action definitely isn't for everyone. It's a little odd if like the retaliator is what you consider normal, but the system is mechanically sound. It works well as far as lever action systems go. And no notes on the trigger pull. It does have slam fire, but it's not traditional slam fire. So you don't actually have to press the trigger when it's in slam fire mode. And the catch release in single fire mode is normal. So no real comments on the trigger. The grip and the comfort, just like the lever action system, certainly isn't for everyone. It's a very particular feel. It's kind of odd. It sweeps back rather aggressively. It doesn't stand up straight like a pistol grip and like a lot of classic blasters. But my subjective taste is Side. It is oversized, it's ergonomic and comfortable. I think a kid's hand would fit fine and it's not alienating or cramped for an adult's hand. Personal note, I think these are kind of strange and I don't like this grip angle, but you know, it works for some people. <laughs> Getting back to the stock attachment point. Now this stock attachment point is kind of odd, but I really like it. This stock is included with the Scravager and it snaps on just like any normal in-strike stock. When I inspected this blaster at the Toy Fair, I didn't notice that the stock attachment point is actually upside down. So it is compatible with normal stocks. To show you what I mean, here's a stock aid stock. Now if you try to put it on the normal way, it won't lock into place because this stock attachment point is installed upside down. I didn't modify it. It comes like this because it's designed to work upside down. Because the stock attachment point is so low in comparison to something like a strife or anything else, meaning this stock attachment point is among the highest point in the blaster, this stock attachment point is super low. So when they invert the stock, it didn't fit. So this placement is perfect. If you were to attach it this way, it would feel out of place. Like this elevation is just too low. And if you put the included scavenger stock into a normal blaster, it'll work. And I mean, it's kind of small, but it doesn't like like flip upside down in that awkward way. I think the inversion of that stock attachment point is a really creative use of existing hardware. So Nerf didn't have to include a proprietary stock or anything or completely redesign this blaster. They just flipped it upside down and it works really well. The included stock is super short. I often make fun of the retaliator stock because it's just hilariously small and unusable and it's about the same length, but on the Scravenger system, it works fine. I think the length of the included stock fits the proportions of the blaster quite well. That's not even the coolest part of the stock. Yeah, I know, right? Mind blown. That's a pretty cool element, but this one, includes a blaster. This little two-shot jolt reskin clicks into the blaster as an emergency shot. So you're running around to the scavenger, you run out of ammo, and you're like, 
like, uh-oh, grab the emergency blaster, then you have two more. This little blaster really is just a basic jolt reskin. It even resembles the jolt quite heavily, but it has two shots and it uses a smart AR system. So you load in two shots, then you can sequentially fire one, two. So you have a two shot pistol. Fires one at a time though, not both at once like a shotgun. And I know everything's a jolt reskin, right? But this proper jolt reskin is a nice compromise between the original jolt and like the triad. The triad being a three shot blaster is much thicker than this. This has the same side profile as the standard jolt. So it doesn't take up too much space or add like a big catch point that you would like rub on and get kind of annoying or accidentally bump into stuff. The attachment mechanism here is acceptable, but on the weaker side. The blaster snapped off a number of times during my testing procedure, but that includes some hardcore parkour and abuse. You just have to be aware of it and make sure you don't bang that into stuff. Um, otherwise it, the blaster will pop off. Sounds like a ridiculous thing to say out loud. Just don't hit the blaster into stuff and you should be fine. My testing procedure is elaborate bros. <laughs> I really appreciate these two little circles down here because it helps with the alignment. If you're trying to snap it into place and you're like, hmm, how does that snap? You can simply align these two circles with the two little circles that are built into the Jolt Reskin's handle here and then push down and it fits. So lots of innovation back here with the inverted stock attachment point and the integrated Jolt Reskin. I think it's pretty cool and I really appreciate being able to pull off the stock, mostly for storage. The Sling Fire, which is a very comparable blaster to the Scravenger, is really long and it's, it doesn't fit into my standard totes. So even if you don't want to tactically switch to a different stock, I like being able to just break down the blaster to store it into a smaller box or whatever. But to restate, this is the core scavenger with no attachments affixed. Everything else I'm covering in this video is included with the scavenger, but I just want to make that clear. The included barrel attachment attaches just like any other barrel attachment. It has a giant inner diameter. They don't even have a faux barrel in here, which looks a little bit unfinished, but it's guaranteed to not negatively affect your performance. It's not going to rub on the dart to decrease your muzzle velocity or change your accuracy at all. And I think it looks pretty cool, even if it doesn't match anything at all. The next attachment is the Tactical light. Now this is kind of like the old recon light. You Remove the screw, take off this back cap, and install three AAA batteries. And that grants you the almighty power of turning on a super dim green tack light. <laughs> Just like the recon light, just like every light Hasbro has ever released, it's super underpowered, but they would be flooded with lawsuits if they put in like a thousand lumen like tactical light, of course. This is what pretty much anybody would expect from a, a nerf tack light, but it's still uh, pretty bad. And the shape is really weird. I think this looks like a screwdriver handle. I don't know if that's intentional. That's some pretty hardcore MacGyver action to turn a screwdriver handle into a light magically. Okay. And of course the top is the standard in-strike attachment point. So this will slide onto any in-strike tack rail. I feel like it's definitely intended to be put up here. The next attachment is the light slash magazine holder. The yellow part is supposed to be like an optic or a light. It doesn't have a magnification. It doesn't even have glass in there. And that's not a powered thing. You're supposed to just look through it and pretend you're more accurate. And that just like the tack light attaches with the standard in strike attachment point right there. This little gray piece though is a magazine holder. And as you can see, it moves freely on this hinge. So you're able to shove in a mag to hold a spare on the blaster. This, like the tack light, is very gimmicky in my opinion. This is not a secure way to hold a magazine, but if you're not the type to run tack gear, I mean, it's better than nothing. When running a lightweight magazine like this 12 round stick mag, it works fairly well. and It'll make some noise by sloshing around a little bit, but I had to shake the blaster pretty violently to get the magazine to fall out of the clipping system here. Although I wouldn't say it's strong enough to put in a drum magazine or the heavier, like more massive uh, magazines. It works fine with the included 12 round mag though. And it includes two of these 12 round stick mags and they do have the special deco on the outside, which look very zombie strike like. And now this is the scavenger with all of the included attachments attached and it definitely changes the appearance. So those are the externals of the scavenger and a breakdown of the included accessories. Let's see it out on the firing range. Using regular blue elite darts for video visibility. Starting out in single fire. Now moving to slam fire. Trying out some waffle head darts.
Well, it appears I'm out of ammo. Just kidding. Jolt for the win. Two misses, awesome. You suck! Stock blaster with some waffle head darts. Firing the Scravenger is really fun. It's very similar to firing the Zombie Strike Sling Fire, with one huge improvement in my opinion, the ability to opt in to Slam Fire. This is a great added element, and it's one of those that if you don't want to use it, just don't flip that switch and you can remain in single fire. It's not a nuisance to anyone. But if you want to shoot a little faster, you can just flick that switch and go Slam Fire mode. Through my testing procedure, I did not have any jams or malfunctions with the Scravenger. Everything worked as expected. And I threw the Scravenger up on the chronograph and achieved an average velocity of 65 feet per second. I also tested the included Jolt Reskin, or the Blaster Storm in the stock and achieved an average velocity of 52 feet per second. Scravenger's 65 FPS is a little below the 70 FPS par, but not to a degree that's worth complaining about. The Jolt Reskin shoots as most Jolt Reskins do. 52 FPS is not worthy of a primary, but it's in line with other backup or emergency pistols. So 52 FPS, nothing to complain about, kind of as expected. Overall firing performance of the Scravenger is acceptable or pretty much in line with other blasters on the market. So overall opinion on the Zombie Strike Scravenger. Overall, the blaster does what it advertises. No jams or malfunctions, acceptable firing performance, and I think it includes some pretty cool accessories. I think it's a clear upgrade from the Sling Fire. It's not just different, I think it offers everything the Sling Fire did, plus more. So there's really no reason to buy the Sling Fire anymore, in my opinion. Unless you just really dig those cosmetics, and that's a subjective opinion, not based on data. It's all about the emotions, and my programming doesn't include those. <laughs> that new firmware update. Uh, Lever action blasters certainly aren't for everyone, but this is a more competitive lever action than the sling fire. The added feature of slam fire is really cool. I also really dig the stock attachment point. I think inverting this mount was really clever so you can use other in-strike stocks. They didn't have to make this like a proprietary mount. And you're able to put this blaster onto other stuff for the, the jolt reskin to be attached to your strife or whatever. And beyond the tactics of being able to switch to a different stock, I really appreciate being able to break this blaster down to make it smaller just for storage. And it's also super tactical to get out your nerf blaster and like prep it by attaching everything. It's like this gear up sequences when the guy on the rooftop takes out his briefcase and his blasters, or his gun, sorry, probably not assassinating somebody with a nerf blaster. Then he assembles it all and he threads in the barrel and you feel like a badass when you do that, so I appreciate it. And you're obviously not using a lever action blaster to competitively nerf because a flywheel blaster would destroy it. So it's gotta be about those emotions for you, you, you lever action people. Yeah, I'm looking at you, James. <laughs> The accessories are pretty gimmicky, but the whole Zombie Strike line is pretty gimmicky in itself. This front tack light, completely useless. I think it looks kind of silly and coolish. I don't really care for the top optic and the magazine holder. It's a little too flimsy for my preference, but I abuse my gear when I nerf, and I typically carry my mags in tack gear like attached to my body. But if you're more of a casual nerfer, it is convenient to be able to just pick up one blaster and have two mags with you without having to, you know, throw on a fanny pack or tack gear. Tactical fanny pack with extra mags. Oh yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And I do like the barrel extension. I think it's a weird color choice. It just doesn't match but the yellow and orange they're getting kind of crazy with it. And I really appreciate that there's no faux barrel, so it's not negatively affecting your performance. So if you think it looks cool, you can take this and put it on your strife or like a competitive blaster. Lever action fanboys just flinched, bro. They're like, oh, not competitive. Oh no, right to the right to the feels. I know there are plenty of nerfers who really dig the sling fire. They're just really into the lever action blasters. And I think the scravenger is a clear upgrade to the sling fire. I mean, there are like no tactics on this blaster. No front barrel attachment point, no tech rails up here, just the one little thing here. Where are my tactics, bro? I mean, come on. The scravenger has brought more tactics to the Zambi Strike line, which I appreciate, like always. More tactics, the better, bro. Front barrel attachment, tack rail under here, rail up top, and the stock attachment point, which is super cool. The integrated jolt blaster. I think this is as practical and tactical as you can make a lever action blaster. And that's saying something. So to restate my personal opinion, the Scravenger does what it's supposed to do as far as lever action blasters go. Thumbs up, I like it a lot. I'm sure you guys are aware of my bias towards Flywheel Master Race and not the Spring Blasters, particularly inefficient ones like the Lever Action Blasters, but I totes get that not every nerfer out there is just trying to destroy their opponent, whatevs. The Scravenger is fun to use, no jams or malfunctions, firing performance is in line with other blasters, and it's a clear upgrade from 
from the Slingfire, in my opinion. So overall, thumbs up. Pretty solid blaster. But hopefully I've laid out all of the facts for you to make that purchase decision for yourself. But I'd love to hear your feedback. Any of you guys who really like the Slingfire and regularly field it, are any of you still going to stick to the Slingfire even though the Scravenger is, well, in my opinion, a clear, like, upgrade? If so, why? Do you just not like having the tactical attachment points for, to go, like, old school, like analog? Maybe you like the cosmetics? I don't know. Leave a comment in the section below. Which one do you like better? Hasbro is nice enough to send me this one prior to its launch. When it is released, I'll be sure to add a purchase link in the description box below. Scravenger will retail for $49.99 or about $50 US dollars and will be released in fall of 2018. That concludes this video review, bros. Thanks so much for watching. As always, stay tactical.